hello vanakkam namaskar i'm welcome to be at another episode of my podcast the people i meet i'm shruti vijay kumar vasant a radio jockey from chennai and on this episode today i'm going to be introducing to you someone who actually needs no introduction because her art speaks for itself someone who is truly as beautiful as her name inside and out someone who creates art not just for herself but to sort of add beauty to the surroundings and i remember being drawn to the arts once again after having followed her on instagram for quite a while and i'm truly truly thankful that i met this wonderful human being through instagram so with no further ado i introduce to you my guest artist avanti hi avanti welcome to my podcast hi shruti thank you so much So definitely Avanti I think today a lot of our conversation is going to revolve around art okay but what i want to sort of focus on is avanti the person and not avanti the artist because avanti the artist we all know we all love we all adore your work and i think i have like i said you know you drew me back to the arts after a small hiatus exclusively after just watching you create piece after piece and doing it so effortlessly i remember being so engrossed by the let's art with avanti challenge and just being so happy being able to create art art on my own so obviously art has played a huge huge role in your life right and yes. just to give a sort of you know uh, understanding to my listeners take me through your fascination with art of all forms not just the artist but take me through your fascination through all art forms Yeah, that's I have to thank you for making me part of this wonderful initiative. I was always inspired by the command for language you have and the spontaneity. So that relation is mutual like this here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and coming to your question, yeah, art has always been a part of my life right from my childhood. I was that kid who used to take a paper and pencil wherever she goes during a vacation or a long drive. So I was always like that, and I I am a single kid, so that uh, gave me a lot of time. And art was my companions. Both my parents were into uh, work, profession, and they had their own dream, and they created a, a education institution, mm-hmm. which was their dream during their early years of education. So um, I grew along with their passion as well as my passion. Right. So whenever I used to get back from home, I. I either used to indulge myself in a piano class or a music class or a dance class. Not as such an art class though. Right, right, right now. So it was not like my mom who pushed me to go to all the classes. Mm-hmm. It always used to be me. Like I'll get back from my uh, school and I'll be like, "See, this teacher is very good for dance. Can you please enroll me?" And see, he is good for piano and he is coming for the next week. Can you ask him to come home for at least two days per week? Right. So that was always the scenario at home. Okay. And whenever there is an exhibition or whenever there is an event at school, obviously I'll be there and everything. Mm-hmm. So there was always me in school, and I used to have that kutti uh, fans. For example, if I'm eighth standard, I'll be having all kutti fans from fifth standard, fourth standard, tenth right. standard right. Uh, coming around. They are the account, the account, all that. So right. I, I don't know. My school life was really beautiful. I've had and I have wonderful memories, wonderful supportive staff and friends. Mm-hmm. I'm a juniors. Right. So art in all forms, be it dance, music. Uh, a painting writing mm-hmm. it's always within me and okay. my school also played a huge part in molding me and molding my love for arts right and i think around 8th standard or something my dad took me to tanjur big temple okay so i asked him what should i study if i want to build something of this sort he said mm-hmm. maybe civil engineering then after a month or so i think he came back from anna university he came back and he said abhi actually there's a course called architecture which is mm-hmm. exclusive for designing Maybe mm-hmm. I think you should pursue architecture. From then on, architecture was my goal. So that actually pushed me to pursue my architecture from School of Architecture and Planning, Anna University. Right. So architecture, obviously, art. It made sure art was with me. You even during my professional days, professional right. education days. Right. And then I went on to pursue my masters in architecture from that in New York. Mm-hmm. Then I got back. Since I'm coming back from educational institutions background, right. I always had this love for children and love for education. Mm. So that's when Teach for India got my attention. Okay. One of my seniors from college, who was part of Teach for India fellowship, so I was following his work for a long time, and mm. I was really, really inspired. Right. So I went on, and I went on through the interview process and all that. I got in. Then I went to the institution uh, training. 
So right. I got back. I was there for a while, but then I, I got married and mm-hmm. a few other scenarios. So I had to take a back step, but still I was in touch with each other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that is your journey, right? Something that was yes. so rooted deeply in your foundation itself, sort of led you on this path. And it's very rare, you know, that children at like as you know, young. When you said eight standard, that's quite a young age to sort of have an impression and to sort of have a goal that people work towards. Because just a while ago, I was having a conversation with someone, and we were talking about, hey, we never knew that lives would take on this path for us, right? Like, for example, me when I did my electronics and communication engineering, I for sure knew that that was not what I was cut out to be, but I didn't know where I wanted to go from there. right i did my masters in business administration i went back to work with my dad but then i i knew somewhere that that was not what i was that was not what i wanted to do or that was not what i you know loved but it's so nice to hear that you knew this from a start and you worked towards your goal tirelessly so that's very very beautiful i think this was also because uh, the exposure i had as a young child right uh, as i told you we had we have education institutions from the field of engineering polytechnic mm-hmm. art and okay. science and all that so there they used to conduct goal setting time management the raila camps and rotary club and all used to happen over there right right so what i would do is i would always be i i go and be a participant in all the events okay all of them would be uh, education i mean engineering uh, graduates or right. students of different uh, college background but i would be the only school kid that too i think fifth standard or sixth standard i'll go sit and okay. i will also actively participate in all the pie charts or goal management charts right. and all that okay i think from then on i had the exposure of yeah you have to have a, a long term goal short term goal and right i think that exposure played a vital role in my life okay and that's what made all the things to fall in place and connect the dots i guess I think yes I, again uh, that is also something that I recently connected with I don't know why ever since I sort of started this podcast series the people that I've met right the people I meet have sort of influenced the way I think as well because it was just a few days ago where I read this very beautiful article where fictional characters teaches very important life lessons and in that one of the line that said uh, it was said in the incredible's movie luck favors the prepared We usually say fortune favors the brave, right? But luck favors the prepared was such a different thing to me at that point because honestly, when you think about it, preparation is key, right? We all have sure. dreams, we all have aspirations, we all want to aim for the stars. But where do we see ourselves? Are we putting in the work, right? I think that is a very important thing, and like you said, I think that exposure to all of these, uh, you know, rituals of goal planning and management sort of set you on this path. getting back to Thank talking you. about the arts avanti now that you have this exposure to music dance and the arts itself how do you sort of see the connect with the three because obviously art by itself is intangible there is nothing that you can compare it to right and never it's never like one is better than the other right so how do you yeah. sort of connect the dots when it comes to art to me I always felt happy whenever I indulge myself in any one form of the art, be it dance mm-hmm. or music or even painting. I had this happiness, mm-hmm. and it was also a way to let myself out, and it's also a way to express myself. When I emote in dance, I become that that character. See, Avanti as a person can be different, right? But a Nayaka Nayaki who's playing in a dance is totally a different person. Very true. It can be a king or that can be a warrior so i love enjoying portraying the, those characters right right it was the like role sense. play yeah yeah see i think i always loved role playing being a child so right. uh, being a single kid and stressing this point i'm single kid because uh, though i had time to spend with my cousins or friends that will happen during the vacation or during the weekends but every single day when i get back home it was always me and my party So what I do is I used to always play with my dolls. I used to have this role. I enjoy playing different roles. I used to be at one point doing some kitchen work. Then I'll be a guest and I would I would serve whatever I put in the kitchen, as in the toy kitchen. Right. And I think art also helped me to find that sort of happiness and the companionship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's when I think I started enjoying art so much. And right. when you see like how I explained in dance, I enjoyed uh, role playing. In mm-hmm. painting, it was always 
my stroke, my pain rush, and just my intuition. I never okay. used to uh, care about much about the output. I okay. always love to try something. I used to scribble. Uh, right. it, it may not be a very good end product, but I somehow felt the process gave me a lot of happiness. So more than the output, more than the perfection that actually renders at the end, I think the process. I think the process and all the art form. That's what has actually made me engrossed and pushed also me to pursue it further and learn more. Right. And now right. that I'm more grown up and I'm like get getting back slowly back at dance and music and all. Hmm. The way I see the three art forms are totally different. I see a lot of uh, correlation. I see a lot of similarity. And lot of theory similarities in all the three art forms. Right. So right. what I pursue in dance, sometimes I try to emulate the same in arts too. Okay, that's a beautiful thought process because I think every artist, when you ask them this question, right? Because there, sometimes you you sort of realize that you cannot separate the art from the artist because it comes with you. It's something that it's not like a coat that you can just remove and you know place on your coat hanger when you walk into a room. It's not like that. It's something that you grow up with. It's something that's so deeply enrooted in you that it becomes the way you think. right so just going back uh, avanti and talking about you know your fascination for the arts it's been performing arts it's been visual art and like you rightly said sometimes it's not just about the output it's about the process of enjoying it so as avanti the artist a lot of us we see the end product and we are so enamored by how effortlessly you make it seem right so what goes on in your mind when you create these pieces of art Have you ever thought about it from that perspective? What people would be thinking about it, or do you just do it for the joy of it? Actually, I do it just for the joy of myself, and somehow I feel when I enjoy, I think people will also enjoy. Okay. Because the artist should feel that happiness and that satisfaction when they create something. Only then, I think it can be easily translated to the viewer. Right. Okay. So what you see is small snippets from my overall work. Mm-hmm. but i do take this half an hour time every day in the mornings where i just go switch on my music and okay. just paint the the music or the paint just flow mm. and like i always say i take energy for for the whole day from that half an hour and and i don't see it in the way like oh i should have to post this today and what whether they like it or not no mm. i'm just doing this today maybe i'll share it with people if they like it i'm very happy okay and if they lo- don't like it you don't take it close to heart no no see everyone's perception is different okay see what i like may not be your cup of tea what you like may not be my liking so i think you have to respect each one's perception and liking at the end of the day i think we're all grown up and we love we all have we should have the perspective i guess i think that's a very honest admission uh, being an artist because i mean i'm not really sure I have not been on the other side so I can't vouch for that but I feel sometimes as a performing artist right when you're on stage and when you after you finish this really complicated varnam or a tilana and somebody just you know stands up and gives you that ovation the feeling that you have then is something that's unparalleled right but when it comes to the arts and the way you're saying that it it doesn't really matter you don't let an other person's criticism affect you how do you sort of you know differentiate between that see there is two things one is a constructive criticism the other thing about liking one piece or not mm-hmm. if there is something i can improve on i'll definitely let my I'll lend my ears to it okay. okay if it is something just about i like this i i feel you should have, you should have done better because this is i'm not liking this that that sounds different right, right. you have to differentiate right. between what is a constructive criticism and what is just a personal liking right. if you have that clarity mm-hmm. i think shouldn't be a big issue you shouldn't let it you know get to your yeah. head and process yeah it exactly processing. yeah okay. maybe i think i'm more mature now when i uh, when you compare myself when i was in school but right. even right from those days i never work for others i work for myself the joy it gives right. it is unparalleled Mm-hmm. Yeah. and i think that's a very important lesson that we should be taking away from this conversation because as an artist or as a creator there are often many times where we experience this uh, you know sort of I won't say insecurity but we have self doubt. We wonder whether we are on the right path. We wonder whether we are creating things that are truly, you know, worth putting out there. And today with the pressure of social media, it sort of constantly becomes like, hey, is that good enough? 
okay is it better than what somebody else is doing but wherein that comparison is sometimes not necessary right sometimes you just have to be better than what you did the previous day and that's perfectly exactly. okay exactly right okay that's a very wonderful take away from that part of the question moving on avanti i know that you work very closely with kids and you said that you love teaching especially after you've been a part of teach for india so how do you sort of bring in your life lessons into a cultural or uh, say a stereotypical classroom how do you sort of see that do you bring in your personal experiences into teaching or do you feel that sometimes it's just better to go straight off the book i think it is an amalgamation of both because i come from a matriculation background when i was in teach for india it was state board now my daughter is into montessori okay and i also have this intuition by myself i start reading about different mediums and how they work Mm-hmm. uh but all all we learned in those days was just textbook we used to read something even you understand or not you just mug it up you write it up right and just then forget that's what education when we were uh, children right but now when i see my uh, daughter the way the teachers teach them and the way they enjoy learning mm-hmm. my perspective is totally changed mm-hmm. i feel when i was i am with children i take the pros in both the mediums okay and try to make a perfect blend perfect balance and and try to give it to the children child children for example you can see the flow of nature from montessori the flow uh, like from, how from the root level they teach the basics even for example in english it's not like abcd but it's more like a uh, b k it's more of phonetics right and i could see how children is more independent mm mm-hmm. when they read a book when they start reading word and when they start reading books it is more of independent when you compare with the matriculation background right, but right. what are the good uh, things you can take from matriculation is that hard work the push right. so when you have both i think that uh, that's, that's what i believe in uh, when i when it comes to teaching with children I think that's a very fair point to make because especially in today's competitive world right as parents I think a lot of people put in a lot of thought I think when we were studying when I mean I'm speaking as a true 90s kid uh, that time I think they had just like a couple of options either it was ICSE yeah. or you know it was CBSE or it was matriculation and there was no yeah. concept of oh my god will my child be happy in that school was not you know sometimes a question that parents ask themselves it was just about whether a child would be able to cope with the future is my child ready for the future is something that the yeah. parents of that generation used to think today as opposed to where parents sort of you know do a thorough research they understand the child they understand what the child's needs are and then you know go forward with education i think that in itself has, speaks a lot about how we've progressed as a society i think now we are some somewhere we're letting go of the little values which we had when we were ch- uh, children right so i think we have to look back think and try to bring in and incorporate those values also in this education system right going back to the roots and sort of talking about because i think today more than preparing for life right uh, of course yes it is important as much as we talk about and stress about the importance of an a class education i think it's important to teach our children to be good human beings first right yeah, very true. i think that is uh, something that people really need to be focusing on but again that is a topic that we are going to have a very different day and we are going to delve into the details of parenting uh, you know hopefully on another episode but today going back to avanti the artist right so i have always admired the penchant with which you sort of bring art to life right so has anybody sort of inspired avanti that way Where do you draw your inspiration from? I draw my inspiration from nature. Okay. From everything around me. Right. I feel architecture education, uh, the five years of UG and the two years in masters, mm-hmm. made a lot of difference. Okay. It actually trained me to see things in a particular way. Right. You will get into that space sense, the color sense. because you are dwelling with the architecture the, the the theory about design space and colors right. and materials for a long time i think it also train you to see things in a different way okay. architects actually they uh, so though many of them pursue to be an architect after uh, formal education i see many of them also try with fields like fashion uh, right. and design and say arts in that mm-hmm. case mm-hmm. so we also do work with different brands 
where we start from the logo design to packaging design and the websites and all that i think architecture was that foundation which gave me uh, to see things in a different frame different perspective okay. and how spaces work not just in 3d but also in 2d right and right. also taught me to uh, develop that sort of taste Mm. uh inspiration of course i do will have uh, creative blocks at many times i won't have that sort of inspiration to pick up a brush for even weeks or months mm-hmm. what i do usually in that point of time is just to take a walk around the house mm-hmm. or just to spend some time with my daughter or just take the uh, take the paper and pencil and start mm-hmm. scribbling something okay. at the end of the day i think you will get some sort of inspiration from that okay and you will go on and inspiration as as a person i have like lots of them mm-hmm. my dot my father in that case he is so good at painting he okay. he draws a, amazing portraits okay. he doesn't do much these days by but, right. but i remember uh, when i was a child he used to sp- he, he was also good with poetry he uh, yeah, he had very good oration skills and he had this love for arts actually i think that's where it all started yeah he used to read tamil poetry for me he used mm. to read about bharatiya and we used to have a discussion about bharatiya at house we used to take one poem and we can and we used to discuss about it mm. and uh, he always used to give me books during my birthdays the love for books love for tamil love mm. for arts right i i think i perceived it from my dad i think when yeah. you're talking about it it really comes through because i have seen a several of your posts where you talk about andal right andal bharatiya all of this are heavily influenced by tradition right and somewhere i feel in that sense you through your page a lot of people get to know these things because these are things that people don't normally talk about right of course yes uh, there there is a a targeted community or a group of people who still indulge in these conversations and all of that but to a layman for example if a 13 year old is following you right that 13 year old is seeing this right and the 13 year old goes back and she she or he has a conversation with his parents and say ma today avanti akka drew this and this is what i learned and i think that's a beautiful influence and a very positive impact that you're creating in people's minds so kudos to you for that but please continue i just wanted to thank say- you actually i get a lot of messages from people uh, especially about uh, bharatiya and andal mm-hmm. and uh, people also ask me a month before marbury like what are hey. your plan what is your plan for this marbury right because every mamle have this habit of doing some sort of different uh, themes mm. for the 31 30 days of mamle right so once people i i understand people are enjoying this and mm. i could uh, translate those literature to people in a simple way in a minimalistic exactly. way but i also intrigue that sort of interest in them i feel i should do it more and that that's what is pushing me also to do more like on the other hand my mother who's also very good in tamil poetry she used to write a lot Okay. Although she never used to paint, I think uh, the love for language is also from both my uh, mother and father. Okay. And uh, Pavai, Pavai, which means Andal, Pavai right. Amal is my grandmother's name. Okay. So okay. always in a family, we had a special place for Andal and uh, right. uh, reciting Thiru Pavai and all that. And that's what I, I I just wanted to let the world know there are a lot of things which is available in our own uh, mm-hmm. history. So I think you have to rejoice and celebrate those. There is no wrong in celebrating the foreign literature or foreign right. culture. I'm not against it. I'm also right. saying equally, let's we should also rejoice where we come from, what are our roots. I think that's a very positive impact because uh, I am somebody who truly, deeply believes in that. Uh, coming from maybe not exclusively an artistic background, but having you know learned the arts as a child, I definitely agree with a lot of things that you said. Because going forward, I will be able to teach the next generation, or at least tell them that, hey, listen, you know, this is something that's very beautiful about our culture, and we should be talking about it more and celebrating it. Like you rightly said, I think that's a very nice choice of word because. there is so much to celebrate in life right sometimes we think we lead a very monotonous life but when we go back and when we look at sort of the history or the legacy that we have there is so many reasons to find joy in that beautiful true, beautiful, true. beautiful all right getting back to talking about joy and the arts the art brew company 
is something that's very close to you and when you were talking about the 30 days of margari i think i also immediately your calendar came to my mind because i i remember being so excited and it's not just about the packaging it's just about the way you present your whole calendar that is very exciting to anybody so tell us Thank a little you. bit about art brew tell us how that adventure happened uh when i got married when i got back from my masters uh both myself and raj we wanted to do something together because both of us have seen our mother and father being in business or at home playing equal roles so coming from that background we thought like why can't we create something for ourselves see both of us have our own responsibilities in our family run business or family run uh, initiatives uh, but both the parents said maybe take few years for your itself yourself and create your own identity and get back to our uh, business right. or initiatives so that gave us a lot of time and uh, uh, the first year we spent experimenting okay. we started with something called swashraya and okay. what we did is like raj is very good at writing okay so every friday it was like a blog i used to create a product and raj used to write something based on that oh okay it was for 5 years back i guess yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. for 52 weeks for one whole year we did it Okay. Every week on Friday, I used to create a simple product, and Raj used to write on that. Okay. People started waiting for the Fridays, Friday, right. and I used to get messages from Thursday. What is the product for this week? Right. So that's when we started studying a lot about social media. We did a lot of experiments in different uh, mediums, and mm-hmm. we started reading about branding okay. and design and all that. By the end of it, we had Lida, mm-hmm. and we decided maybe we should start something very seriously at this point of time because we have a new addition in the family. It is the right time for us to also take a profession at a different level. Right. That's when uh, we decided to do. We start uh, the Art Brew Creative Company, where we okay. do art, architecture, and design. It is like a one-stop destination for all your design needs, be it 2D or 3D. Right. right. And Raj is uh, very good in marketing and execution and production. Okay. So we thought I'll do the design work, and he will do the other later part. Okay. and it is actually more about the brainstorming you do the, mm-hmm. during the idea stage idea stage right then how i during the process is inputs values a lot and how during the production i also drop in and say like maybe the sort of papers we can use we can uh, think about using this make this medium and all that so it is mutual and we enjoy doing that's so how a, we started the art group creative company yeah so it's a true and true partnership in every sense of the word right because i think that's very important uh, because a lot of people believe that you should leave work at work and come back home to just being family but i think somewhere today everything is sort of changing those lines are blurring and we are happy to be in partnership with our better halves not just in life but also at work and i think that's a yeah, nice true. amalgamation to have as long as you have those boundaries set in place all right it's been a very very interesting conversation talking about a lot of you know amazing and about topics the calendars yes the calendars please tell us a little bit yeah. about that yeah Yeah, about the calendars. What started just as a gifting uh, option for our clients has mm-hmm. translated into a com- e-commerce product. Okay, okay. So we started four years back when we had our clients in our private company. For the first year, we thought during New Year we will give some sort of gifting to, the, right. to our clients. Right. Then we thought, okay, I am good in painting and he is good in writing. So okay. I we did um, concept art. We mm-hmm. created a character called a Luman girl, girl, and uh, I did the painting, and Raj did his uh, writing, and we blended it together. We also uh, went to Chennai Patna because we thought we had to add art touch, our culture somewhere. So we went to Chennai Patna, and we worked with artisans there, and we handcrafted a special uh, wooden stand for the calendar, and we made a different packaging, and we started gifting to all our friends and our clients. So all their friends and uh, saw some of their relatives. They saw the calendar, and they were like, "We also want to." the second year we almost uh, uh, forgot about the gifting thing we thought maybe because we were maybe we thought because of the first year with the gifting maybe we should stop it because we are also have lot of projects at this point of time right right but i think after, before around november I, uh, something i i guess uh-huh. i got a message from one of my friend and she was like are they newly married and she right. said your calendar is the only calendar we we have in the house when are you making the new year calendar i was right. like oh now that's interesting i was like oh yeah 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 we are like working on it <laughs> we had absolutely no clue what right. we were going to do at that point of time i said yeah yeah right. we are working on it then we were like okay stop everything just let's spend two to two or three days on what we are going to right. develop for this year 
Then we did the galaxy themed Kalyan and Hobbes inspired calendar series. Uh, same thing. I did artwork and Raj did his writing, and we blended it. And that's how the entire game changed. And every year we do uh, something based on different themes. One year it was Chandra Patna, another it was Chetinar. Right. So Last we're looking. Year it was all about hope. Yeah. So we're looking forward to what 2021 is going to be bringing us, and I hope and pray that it's a lot of peace and prosperity, and of course a lot of exactly. joy in all of our lives because I think we definitely deserve that after the year that 2020 has been. But uh, sort of uh, you know wrapping up this conversation, uh, Avanti, bringing together all the elements that we've spoken about because we've spoken a little bit about parenting, we've spoken a little bit about how the arts has influenced you and your partnership with Raj, right? As a mother, as an artist, as a woman, there are several aspects that make Avanti the person that she is. As a mother, what is it that you think is your biggest strength? as a woman what is it that you think is your biggest motivator and as an artist what do you think is beautiful about your art all three are strengths that's what i'm talking about but as a mother as an artist and as a, a woman yeah as a mother i see myself as a companion to dira uh, not like a mother father the respectful role i feel more like i'm also a friend to dira Okay. And I, if she paints, I would also be in her level. I'll paint with her. And if she's throwing tantrums, see, I was talking about the role play, right? Even with Dira, I used to play it. Okay. Sometimes if she's feeling feeling cranky or something, I'll know. Okay, she'll be cranky at this point of time. Right. Uh, for something, some reason, then I'll be like, oh, oh my god, I think I'm feeling very sleepy and really cranky. Dira, I don't know what to do. I act like that, and she will be like, "Amma, don't worry. You sleep for some time. You'll be all right." Okay. I think you're feeling sleepy. That's why you're feeling cranky. Right. So she will play the mother role to me. Right, right. right. So when I, yeah, so it's when I say a friend, it's 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 exactly like friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if I want to teach something to her, I would also go and tell her it in the in her own way. I think that is one of my strengths. Okay. And coming to a woman, I think the self push. It's not being a woman or man. For anyone, I think you should have the self push and the belief in yourself. It's not right. about the raw confidence; it's just mm-hmm. belief, self belief. I think that would be my inspiration. As an artist, I think I am in a place where where I don't care much about the perfection. I understand the process is what makes the difference. I'm not right. saying the output shouldn't look perfect. Okay. In the name of perfection, you shouldn't put yourself in stress. It's right. all about being consistent and also being true to your art. Of mm-hmm. course, within with time, you will improve yourself and you will attain that perfection. Okay. But you shouldn't let the perfection take over the joy of performing. Right, 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 right. I think that's a very beautiful takeaway from this conversation. All the things that you said today make a lot of sense when you look at it from a very holistic perspective. Because I think at the age that we are in today, sometimes it's important for us to remind ourselves where we come from, and as artists or as human beings, or like you said, the reason why I asked you your strength as a woman, uh, and I specifically mentioned the gender, is because somewhere I feel that by nature, right. we are people who sort of tend to nurture people right and we are always playing the mother role whether we are actual mothers or not in reality whether it's to our friends whether it's to our better halves whether it's to our own parents uh, you know sometimes the role reversal like you said rightly happens and then we sort of just find the joy in that we just sort of like being you know the caretaker and sometimes it's just okay for us to remind ourselves that we deserve to be taken care of as well right so that's the reason why i sort of wanted to yeah that's bring very that- true that's why i started the self love with avanti challenge because i see right. a lot of women including my mom and mm-hmm. lot of them who don't even care about the passion or their hobbies or their liking once they get into the family or the professional life right uh, okay. it takes over and obviously with the nature of uh, being mm-hmm. nurturing others i'm giving less time to ourselves i think you have to give that self care and self love at some point of time at least i always push not just my followers my friends and family just to spend that half an hour time for yourself do whatever you want cook even sleep or write do whatever right. you want but half an hour is just for yourself mm mm-hmm. mm uninterrupted by any of life's uh, you know little hassles all right the last question that i have for you avanti before we wrap up 
two things that the world doesn't know about Avanti. Mm. It can be a quality, it can be a character, it can be something that you anything. Avanti, be... Avanti loves to eat. Okay. Okay. I love, love, love to eat. Okay. Uh, but I mean, cakes and biryanis are my weak points. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's why I think I have some sort of system to regulate myself at some point of time, be it workout or anything I do. I I want to balance both. Right. So right. Avanti loves to eat. Of course, like anyone, uh, I will also get my mood swings and right. Yeah, I will also have my ups and downs. It's not like see everyone's life is. I mean, not perfect. Each one's mm-hmm. life. We have different ups and downs. What we show on Instagram is our best moments. But I also try to. Put it out when I feel down and how I tackle it. Right. Uh, especially during my pregnancy, I was down with uh, hyperemissive vomiting and I lost around eight kgs uh, during my pregnancy. And that's when that's when I discovered watercolors. Right. I was always open about it, and and that's when I found watercolor can make me really happy. Then art can make me really happy, and I started mm-hmm. enjoying the process even more. Okay. So, right. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a very true. difficult experience to sort of. Make us yeah. realize where we're headed to. But I always bounce back, so that's uh, I think that that quality. Whatever mm-hmm. happens, yeah, I you can cry about it. You can do whatever drama you want to do about it. But just you have to think what what can you do next, and you have to move on. I don't believe in just uh, being sunken in one emotion and enjoy that. I just right. like to move on and think about what next, and just go. So I think that's a true mark of somebody who wants to be. you know successful in life i think success means different things to different people and uh, definitely it's a very subjective term but truly just being able to live for yourself and live for life's you know little little moments and being able to celebrate that i think that in itself is true success according to me and i think you come across as always as always you've uh, been one of those people who've been very honest very upfront as to what your thoughts are what your moods are and you like i said in the beginning itself let your art speak for itself so thank you so much avanti for joining me today on this conversation and sharing lesser known things about avanti the person uh, rather than the artist it was truly interesting to have this conversation with With you thank you so much thank you so much shruti the entire conversation was very comfortable and beautiful and uh, as i always told you were one big inspiration for me and i'm so glad we came across and we met each other in this platform and we do connect in different ways and thank you so much for being so kind and so sweet as always thank you so much and on that note today we come to the end of this episode of the podcast the people i meet i will be back with yet another interesting story yet another interesting personality so many more stories left to share on the people i meet this is me shruti vijay kumar wasant a radio jockey from chennai signing off for today until next time take care and stay safe thank you